uh, Madam Ambassador, before starting our conversation, I would like to express our thanks for accepting our interview offer. This interview is important also Kitabistan incorporated France national motto in its concept. So therefore, uh, France holds a significant role among the countries we study in Kitabistan, and its development model remains a primary focus of our research. Probably many don't know that the blue color on the flag of France is associated with Saint Martin, who generously cut his cloak with his sword in half and shared it with a man who was poorly clothed on a chilly winter day. France loves to share. In 2022, France became the first largest donor country to the Development Assistance Committee by allocating 0.56% of its gross national income, which is around $15.1 billion, to developing countries for aid for development and poverty reduction. Why is sharing so important to France? First, I mean, thank you, thank you uh, for your interest and uh, thank you to all the team of uh, Kitabistan for uh, giving me the, the opportunity of this interview. Uh, of course, since France, I mean, the, the, I mean, the, the Republic of France uh, is based on secularism, I'm not going to, to talk too much about uh, religious figures, but I think, of course, some values are universal and uh, uh, what is important is solidarity. Uh, because uh, when it comes to uh, global challenges, if you want to uh, have an impact on uh, global diplomacy, uh, and when I say global diplomacy, uh, I'm talking about a diplomacy uh, that aims at um, uh, addressing I mean, the global challenges such as uh, global health uh, issues, uh, climate change, uh, inequalities at the global level, you need also a component of solidarity because you cannot ask the least developed countries to commit uh, uh, in addressing those uh, global challenges without uh, having an element of solidarity uh, in, in your diplomacy. And, and that's why, I mean, yes, you're right, uh, we uh, tried to uh, increase uh, significantly in the recent years the the amount of uh, our uh, overseas uh, development aid uh, in, uh, with the aim to reach, I mean, to get closer to the OECD target, which normally is of 0.7% uh, of uh, national income. And um, we really uh, trust uh, the importance of uh, global uh, and institutions, UN institutions, and for example, during the pandemic, uh, France was at, at the forefront of the um, access to vaccines for the uh, most vulnerable and least developed countries. So we contributed to the COVAX uh, initiative. And uh, also when it comes to climate change, uh, we are really uh, supportive of uh, all the initiatives uh, uh, in global finance to help uh, um, I mean, um, developing and least developed country to uh, uh, reach uh, their targets and to and also to um, find way to uh, mitigate and to adapt to the climate change because of course you have very very uh, vulnerable countries. I mean, before coming to to Azerbaijan, I was. Uh, posted in Australia and it's very well known that all the the islands in the Pacific uh, they are uh, very vulnerable to the to the um, to the rise of the the sea levels because it it creates some I mean, a, a, a big vulnerability to even to their existence. So, so this is, uh, I don't know if you remember, I mean, this picture, I don't know, it was the prime minister maybe of, uh, I don't know which island, but he, he, he spoke, I mean, they, 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 <laughs> he, he was in the water and he was thinking about the challenges uh, that uh, his country was, uh, was facing. So on this, I think we have to, to take a responsibility and be more, I mean, committed in helping those countries. Today, ensuring gender equality is one of the main priorities of the French government. Therefore, 75% of the projects financed by the French Development Agency are aimed at improving gender equality. How did France start ensuring gender equality and what progress has been made in achieving this today? 
I mean, on this, I think it's it's important. Yes, we were talking about I mean uh, I mean uh, solidarity policy. So as you mentioned, it's uh, it's true that uh, uh, since 2018 we have started to put more emphasis on the gender equality in uh, our. Uh, um, all our projects that are financed by uh, uh, France uh, Overseas uh, Development Aid so, and with such target to have 75% of project with a, a gender equality component and to have at least I think 20% of those projects which are focusing on uh, gender equality. Uh, it's very important because sometimes it was an element that was missed. For example, uh, there is a very, um, I mean, uh, um, um, well-known example. I mean, you, you can you can spend money uh, building school uh, in some countries, uh, and you think it's enough uh, to guarantee uh, access to education for the girls. But then, um, if you don't think about uh, uh, building at the same time toilets for the girls, then you have families because of some uh, barriers and. Uh, habits and sometimes religious uh, or social constraints, they, they, they won't send their girls to those schools if they're not sure they can have access to some, uh, yes, uh, girl-only uh, toilets and those kind of things. So you have to factor in uh, always the gender, the gender equality uh, and also sometimes also the, the, the cultural obstacles to that, that exist uh, and, and that remain a barrier to equal opportunities for, for women. And overall, when, when we are talking about, yes, development, it's always important not to forget the uh, half of uh, the humanity, because it's more efficient to have also participation uh, of the women in all, uh, uh, in political life, in economic life, and since they are the first who are also educating the future generation, the, the the values and the principles they are transmitting to the children are of utmost uh, importance for the future. The tradition of the university education in France dates back to the 12th century, when the University of Paris was established, and notable thinkers such as Denis Diderot and Voltaire also studied. Progressive ideas were also able to spread worldwide during the times of stagnation, thanks to the French great thinkers, this year, France was ranked fifth in the Global Education Index. What do you think are the main differences and advantages of the French education system? Well, I think it's a, it can be a, a debate, but I think education is a, is a source of, a, I mean, a big, big debate in France because I think it's a very, very important, uh, yes, element of uh, the public public life but but uh, for foreign students i would say that uh, first and foremost france is a is a european country so when you study in, when when you choose france to uh, to do your ad, uh, for higher education or part of your higher education you are benefiting from now this uh, uh, european wide um, system of uh, uh, I mean, what we call LMD, so a bachelor, master, and doctorate. So it's uh, so you can uh, you can start in France, you can continue in Germany, then in Italy or in Spain or mm -hmm. in in Ireland or in uh, Poland or so so it's all, it's a very well integrated uh, system. Uh, in France, it's also a very uh, international environment because I think that. Uh, um, uh, uh, most of the, the, the PhDs uh, that are completed uh, um, uh, every year in France, and I think it's more than 10,000, are done by, uh, um, by uh, also foreign students. I think it's 40 40%. 40 so, so we have a lot of uh, also foreign researchers in France. The research that is published in France uh, is, is, is always with international collaboration, uh, European, uh, North American, South American, and and. and even now uh, Asian too. So, so it's also a, a wide exposure to, um, to uh, I mean, international uh, cooperation. Uh, I would add that in st uh, studying in France is not very expensive because if the, I mean, of the, the quality is the same, 
but but the, the, the system remains uh, strongly subsidized by the French government, even for foreign students. So I would say like uh, a year of uh, bachelor is uh, less than 3,000 3, euros, so it's, uh, it's much less expensive than uh, what you would find in some uh, equivalent countries. And um, last but not least, uh, of course, there is also a matter, I think, uh, in the end also of employability. I mean, as you know, France uh, is also, I mean, uh, also hosts the headquarters of a lot of uh, French companies, uh, which are multinationals, I don't know, L'Oréal, uh, um, Uh, um, Total, uh, uh, Airbus, uh, and, and many others. So, so I, I, I think also studying in France uh, increases uh, the, the the employability all over the world because all those French companies they have a large uh, footprint uh, overseas uh, uh, in Asia, in Europe, in North America, in South America, in Australia. So studying in France also, I think, uh, increases, I mean, the, the employability of, uh, of students. So I think it's a, good, it's a good bet. When discussing France, it's important to talk about competitive equality of opportunity and combating corruption. In 2016, the France Anti-Corruption Agency was established to prevent bribery, extortion by public officials and the misuse of public funds. At the same time, by adopting the French anti-corruption strategy in its cooperation action 2021-2030, the government uh, demonstrated its commitment to ensuring transparency both domestically and internationally. How do these actions taken by the French government in the fight against corruption contribute to the fair competition? Good question. First, I would say that fortunately, I think the fight uh, against corruption, uh, uh, I mean, which is not uh, an issue that uh, only France uh, faces, uh, didn't start in 2016. Fortunately, I think it started a long, a long time ago, and it's a, it's a whole process about uh, more control about the financing of uh, political parties, uh, obligation for uh, all public institutions to to go through uh, open uh, tender and open procurement and those kind of things. But it's true that recently, I think that the, the understanding of uh, Yes, uh, the need to, 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 to fight even more corruption, I think, was triggered by, by two elements. I think first, I think it's, it's a matter also of the, I would say, the, the, the future and the, and the ability for, for democracy to thrive. Because you, if, if, of course, if there is a, a corruption, then you, you lose, I think, you lose the confidence of uh, the public in the in the political system and also in the elites. And if you lose this uh, confidence, then you, you go ki quickly from democracy to populism, and this is something uh, that is better to, to avoid. And also, of course, the, 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 the having a, I mean, a better uh, ranking in terms of uh, fighting against corruption is also important for businesses, because if you If you want to attract more uh, uh, foreign investment, uh, remain competitive, you have to be able to show that, uh, I mean, these businesses, they can operate in a predictable and transparent uh, environment. So it's true that a lot of steps were taken uh, recently uh, for especially new obligations for um, Uh, elected officials, but also public servants, and uh, they are now independent authorities. So, for example, when you are elected, when you are uh, um, appointed as a minister, when you are even appointed in some uh, uh, civil servant positions, you have to um, to be transparent about uh, uh, your assets. I mean, your real estate, your cars, your your um, your income, the day you take position and the day you leave your position. So it's under con supervision of an independent authority and it's just to make sure that you didn't use your position to uh, 
yes, get richer in a not uh, authorized way. So, so this was a strong step in terms of uh, control and uh, and uh, and transparency. And there is also uh, rules that are quite uh, strict for civil servants. I mean, if you if you are, if you are a civil servant and and then you want to move to the private sector. Then you have also to get some uh, specific authoriz authorization through an uh, independent uh, committee to make sure that uh, you are not hired by a company uh, 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 for uh, whom you could have uh, an influence in your previous position. So what we call conflict of interest. So it's to prevent like conflict of interest. So so now it's true that the whole I mean system is. Uh, is more complex with stricter rules and more and more in, in independent authorities to control and to prevent, uh, yes, risk of uh, corruptions. Under the National Low Carbon Strategy, France has set a goal to achieve carbon neutrality by 2050. And it's also announced that the government will increase its climate finance to 6 billion uh, euros uh, between 2021 and 2025. What are the measures does France plan to take to eliminate the consequences of the climate change, the biggest global problem? I mean, first, as, as I said at the, at the beginning of um, this conversation, this is not something we, we, we yes, we, we can do alone. I mean, again, it's a global challenge, so it, it requires a global commitment and I hope, I mean, I think we all hope that the, the next uh, COP, I mean, the COP28, uh, will, uh, which will um, uh, open soon in the United um, Arab Emirates, will bring, I mean, some, uh, yeah, momentum, so a new momentum. But as I was mentioning at the, the beginning of the conversation, I think, yes, this commitment to, to, to help, I mean, to, to contribute to 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 global uh, to to global finance for uh, for for uh, for developing and least developed countries in the in the fight against climate change is is really strong and 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 it's of course there is I mean the French financial commitments but we, there are also the efforts uh, we we are we we are we are doing to. Um, to um, I mean to um, get together also the actors like uh, in, when in June there, there was a summit in Paris that was organized of uh, the new global finance impact also to encourage uh, financial institutions to to think also a little bit different on how they uh, uh, they they do finance some projects and. Um, and uh, and also to to make yes the statement that of course a country uh, it shouldn't be you shouldn't have to choose between uh, yes a fight against poverty and fight against climate it has to go yes together and uh, so so this is I would say the yes the solidarity aspect and and then of course when it comes to the to our national commitment I think it's a challenge for. For, for all countries, but uh, yes, we are developing strategy to uh, try first to, uh, to to use less energy because I think so. This is what it, it's called sobriety. It's try to spend less energy because uh, uh, the, the energy consumption remains the main source of uh, emission. And then, of course, to have like uh, to decarbonize the, our energy mix, which is already quite uh, decarbonated because. Uh, I mean, France uh, has a, a, a big chunk of the, the energy mix in France is uh, is a nuclear energy, and and we and we remain a strong uh, supporter of uh, nuclear energy because because of course I mean renewables are uh, very very important, and we are developing uh, renewables uh, in France, but uh, as. Uh, as you know, renewable they they don't have the stability uh, to um, and so you you need you need some kind of uh, base uh, in terms of uh, electricity to to you cannot have a one hundred percent renewable a model that is based one hundred percent of renewables because uh, in the renewable I mean solar wind. Uh, I draw you have you, you don't have the stability you have in other way of uh, 
producing uh, energy. You cannot face the peaks the, of, uh, in demand and etc. So you have something. You have to have something to stabilize the grid and uh, and so for us, I mean, nuclear energy remains uh, a low carbon uh, yes uh, emission. Um, energy that uh, we are trying to, to promote. Of course, it's a, it's a debate, including within the, the European Union, but uh, I think that there is now a, a new interest for, for nuclear energy. It's unfortunate to see that many conflicts are raging around the world in these days. But in light of this, I believe it's important to highlight France's role towards promoting peace in Europe. Back in 1950, Robert Schuman, the Foreign Minister of France, proposed a cooperation initiative that commenced the Schuman Declaration. This initiative played a significant role in turning the war page and initiating peace building and integration in wider Europe. What can we learn from France's experience about the process of integration and dialogue leading to peace? It's not easy, it's about uh I think being patient too, and uh, and of of course I think you 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 pointed it rightly. I mean, after war, uh, there is always because this is how war are ending. There is a winner and there is a loser. Uh, I mean, there is a state uh, with the winner, a state with the loser. Uh, uh, most of the time, the people from both countries are the losers because there were uh, lost lives on uh, on both sides. But but then you you have to try to to find the ways to 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 to, to get out of this uh, winner loser uh, equation and this uh, zero sum game and to find new ways of cooperation that are beneficial for both countries or for a larger number of countries and that to have like a, a win-win uh, I would say uh, equation because this is the it's only if there is a, a project that is a win with a win-win uh, equation that uh, the countries and the people will accept to to get out of the winner loser and the zero sum game mentality and of course for for in Europe it was the European project yes that was um, that was um, um, uh, created, I mean, um, yes, for this, and I think it, 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 it offered a, a way out uh, to, uh, to, for cooperation and for uh, mutual, yes, mutual benefits. But it's, it took time. I mean, uh, if, I mean, this year we are we are celebrating the the, the 60th anniversary of the the, the German. Uh, uh, French, the, the friendship treaty between France and Germany, and uh, uh, we have to. It only happened uh, in 1963, which means like uh, uh, 18, 18 years after the end of the Second World War. So yes, the, it also takes time, but of course it's good to have men of uh, and women, of course, of uh, vision that are able to offer. I would say new project and and win-win project just to yes to get rid of the winner loser equation that are of course keeping uh, yes the the resentment uh, alive and resentment is always uh, dangerous. Finally, I would like to address Kitabistan's traditional question to you: What books would you recommend to our readers and viewers to read? It's, a, it's quite a big book, but uh, uh, I think it's a very uh, fundamental book. It's uh, Emile, uh, The Treaty on Education by uh, the French philosopher Jean-Jacques Rousseau. Because it's about, I mean, I think it was quite uh, revolutionary uh, at the time, because uh, it's, it's how do you educate uh, a, new, a human being, and how, and it's about liberal education, and it was the, maybe one of the first book uh, about liberal education at the end of the 18th uh, uh, century. So, how do you raise a human being so that he can also fulfill the human nature and the human goodness? So, it it was at that time it was deemed. Uh, very revolutionary. It was even burnt <laughs> on public places because it was too revolutionary. But uh, for me, it's a, it's a, it's a very it's a very very interesting book because it's 
a treaty on education, but at the same time, of course, it's a philosophy book because it's about uh, human uh, human nature, and um, and um, yeah, and and it's about uh, yes, uh, thinking what uh, is human nature, giving the the, the freedom and the, the the individuality of someone, the ability to uh, express itself. It's it's very modern, and uh, and there is a quote from uh, Jean Jacques Rousseau. Uh, uh, in the book that I uh, really um, like is um, I prefer to be a man of uh, paradoxes or I'd rather be a man of paradoxes than a man of prejudices. Madame so it's about open, open thinking. Madam <laughs> Ambassador, thank you very much for taking your time and for your responses. Thank you very much for this conversation. It um, was very, very interesting.